Hello everybody, we're here on the second day of the meeting for the Alzheimer's International, Alzheimer's Association International Conference in Toronto, Canada. And what an exciting day. Um, we attended a couple of different sessions in the morning and we wanted to give you um, a brief uh, summarized uh, news about what we learned today. So you went and you attended the computerized training session for cognitive impairment. Tell us about it. This is exciting. I mean, I think this was a little bit of a paradigm shift in, in the field. Um, this is something that everybody's been working in and trying to figure out, can you improve cognition, not just for people who are at risk, but for general population using games? And every university is working on this, many companies are working on this. And to date, many of us scientists are, have been a little bit incredulous. We didn't believe that the data supported this kind of a concept, that cognitive training would actually enhance. Uh, but today, there's some evidence that came out of several studies, um, one called ACTIVE, that showed that a system, systematic, intensive, cognitive activity with computerized modeling using computers to enhance cognition has demonstrated significant benefit for uh, those who are normally aging as well as those who are suffering from MCI which is mild cognitive impairment and are at risk for dementia. The, the profound thing that was stated in this uh, uh, talk was the fact that in one study over a 10 year period looking at those who were involved in computerized cognitive activities, the risk of dementia was reduced as much as 40%. Wow. That's remarkable. One activity using just cognitive you know, exercises using computers reduced the risk that, to that extent. And that's with tools that, that were today are considered antiquated. Imagine in a few years where we are going to have virtual reality, adaptive models, artificial intelligence that actually adapts to the person's weaknesses and strengths and enhances their cognition and measures it in a real life setting. In the meantime, making it fun. There's another company in Germany, um, uh, Neuronation, which uses music and motivational techniques to keep the person moving on, uh, forward. So I'm very optimistic that in the near future we'll have computerized games and activities, especially complex activities with virtual reality, that will significantly affect cognition and preservation of the brain. That's incredible. Well, how, how fantastic that is. It is. And you know, to know that there's really no treatment for Alzheimer's disease right now, and there's no medication that can reduce the risk for Alzheimer's disease as much as cognitive training, that's a fantastic uh, uh, area to do more research and find a system to uh, implement this in our patient population. Absolutely. The main things, the main takeaways were complex activities, complex games that are fun for the person and with greater intensity. I see, I see, fantastic. So the session that I attended was on physical activity, exercise and its effect on brain health and fantastic news. So one of the things that uh, they did was to compare you know, very intensive physical exercise and stretching. You know, a lot of times people say they exercise, but we don't really know exactly how much and you know what is the intensity level. So they um, they took two groups of people and they exposed them to stretching and uh, an intensive exercise. And the intensive exercise was quite intensive. It was about 80% of their um, you know respiratory function, the VO2 max that that we uh, mm -hmm. that we refer to. Um, and it was for about 45 minutes a day, about four days a week. And this was done in patients who had mild cognitive impairment and even Alzheimer's disease. And the results were phenomenal. They found out that people who were exposed to the intensive physical activity uh, regimen had uh, bigger areas of specific areas of the brain. Their frontal lobe received more blood flow. They were faster. Their neurocognitive uh, uh, testing scores were much better. And they had lower risk for uh, developing Alzheimer's disease in the future. And um, this was not seen in the group that were only exposed to stretching. Exactly. So the take home message was, we really need to define what exercise basically means and to create a systematic, a standard um, exercise uh, program for, for the patients and make it available for, for everybody out there. 
and, and sustained exercise was, again, another factor that was raised here, right? Definitely, definitely. So to do it on a regular basis, about four times a week and 45 minutes a day in an intensive uh, way. In fact, some of the studies that have failed in the past, it's believed because uh, the, the intensity wasn't enough to reach that necessary dose Absolutely. to aff affect the brain positively. So these are two pieces of information that is uh, very positive for prevention. Absolutely. And with a combination of computer training and the exercise, and uh, hopefully we'll talk about nutrition later on, you know, all of these lifestyle modalities really do make a big difference and prevent this, this horrible disease. Absolutely. I guess we're good for now. We're, we'll come back and talk to you guys later, uh, later during the day and give you more updates. Thank you for joining us. Thank you.